Welcome to our Take Me Home Huey Zoom talk. My name is uh, Steve Maloney. I'm the artist of the project Take Me Home Huey. And today we've invited a special group of people. Photographers from the Combat Motion Picture Unit, 20, uh, 221st uh, Signal Company of the US Army, Don Critchfield. You wanna raise your hand? Oh, we see you, Don. <laughs> Joe, Joe Wallach, and John Andeskovich. Welcome to all of you. We've been fortunate to be able to uh, collaborate with you in the last uh, past years and um, where you've shared some of your team footage and photos for our uh, Take Me Home Huey film and recently for, for my book. And these uh, all were materials that uh, your unit took while you served as a team leader of the combat motion picture unit during the Vietnam War. Did you have a choice in choosing your MOS as a photographer or did some of you volunteer or were you drafted? And <laughs> how did that all come about? How did, how did you become a photographer? That's and a good question. I became a photographer because I was working in, at Chrysler on a production line when I was uh, 18 years old. And my mother worked at a hospital in Detroit and she was called in to work at the hospital during the Detroit riots. And she asked me to drive her down and I drove her through the riot area to the hospital she worked with, worked at. And I saw, I saw looting and people running the streets and I saw the military people, you know, trying to protect sections of the, the neighborhood. And I saw photographers chasing after the looters. And I said, you know what, that sounds like, that looks like a lot more fun than working on a production line at Chrysler. So within a week or two, I enlisted in the Army and requested to be a motion picture photographer. And my first request, uh, and I, I saw the paperwork from the archives, my request was to be stationed in New York City <clears throat> as a combat photographer. And my first assignment was New York City at Army Pictorial Center, Old Paramount Studios. <laughs> so that's how I got involved. You actually <laughs> got what you asked for? That's unheard of. I know, I got what I asked for. And I worked <laughs> with uh, special effects in a Hollywood kind of studio in New York City. Fantastic. Yeah. Before I went, and then they sent me to Europe work in civilian status. Then they sent me to Vietnam oh. with you guys. <laughs> I must have been special, I don't know. <laughs> I was uh, in the Army Michigan National Guard. We were a signal unit Oh, uh, out of Kalamazoo. And uh, we were called up for those Detroit riots. So we were over there, uh, I think it was almost a week. And uh, I remember a lot of those scenes. So we share a common experience. <laughs> yeah. I think one of the scary streets was 10th Street or whatever. Some of those, yeah. they're all on fire. Yeah, my mother worked at Henry Ford Hospital. That was close to the riots thing. I remember, I remember that hospital because I had guard duty there. Anyway, That's how about interesting. you, uh, Interesting. Did you volunteer or were you drafted? I was ROTC out of uh, the University of Nebraska, so I got a uh, diploma and a and a butter bar the, the same day, and uh, I had asked for a signal corps. I, as a kid, remember getting up early Saturday morning to watch the cartoons and the cowboy shows, but before that happened, there was the Army, the big picture with Sergeant Stuart Queen. Mm -hmm. And it was the US Army uh, promo program, probably shot at, at the uh, studios in New York. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I just thought that that was so cool. And as I grew up, I thought, you know, somebody's got to shoot those pictures. Why couldn't it be me? And, you know, un it was a, a bit of a fight uh, to get to the 221st um and dumb luck but it was exactly where i should have been and it led to a career for me but it started way back when i had uh, bunny slippers on 
<laughs> I enlisted for three years okay. because my buddies were getting drafted and they were coming home in boxes. And I thought, you know what? I'll, I'll enlist. So my aptitude test said I'd be very good with electronics. So after basic, I went to Fort Monmouth, New Jersey, cryptographic repair. Mm. Top secret, no books in, no books out. So I lasted in there in that program for about 20 weeks and I phased out and I was heartbroken. I thought, man, I'm, I'm really going to infantry, you know, here it comes. But the lieutenant was very kind to me and he said, you know what? Since you enlisted, we have programs here. And he mentioned a whole bunch, but he mentioned photography. And I said, I think I'd like to do that. So that's how I became a photographer. What was it like? One of the nice things about being a photographer is that when you run out of film, you can go home. <laughs> so, so we were out there, but uh, um, there were times where it was, we, we were with the, with, with the troops, but there were an awful lot of times when um, we were, um, we're not in mortal danger. Being a photographer, we had a lot of different experiences from riding helicopters, going out with the infantry, going out on the river patrol boats, visiting orphanages, leper colonies, uh, schools, hospitals. Uh, it's not like you were just tag along with an infantry unit. At base camp in Long Bend, we just hung out and we didn't really know where we were going until we had a team leader. And uh, it was up to that person to say, okay, guys, we're going here. And you pack your camera and not much else, and you were off. Yeah. How much warning did you have? One time my team was assigned uh, to go into Cambodia after the incursion to uh, film the rice caches and ammo that they'd, they'd discovered from the bad guys. And we had virtually no time at all and they choppered us in dropped us off picked up our film and then left us there so we had to make our own way home that was kind of fun what did you really strive to capture did you have something in mind or you just kind of shoot intuitively sometimes we got orders just to go out and take film other times i got more specific orders uh, they were looking for certain kinds of information. They wanted to see, I don't know, the way the infantry unit and the chopper pilot was working together. Each assignment was a little different. I remember when I was, when I was with Don, he was the one that was sort of in charge of, okay, we're going to go do this and you do that. And uh, I remember one time he mentioned to me, got to get close-ups, too many, too many long shots. Get some close-ups, get some close-ups. And he was right, of course. But other times they would have, I would be assigned to somebody else and they just say, okay, you got a day, go over, find a helicopter, go to a certain unit and do a film and do a specific kind of film. And a couple of times they just had me follow the news media, the civilian news media guys and kind of film what they were doing. I was always out in the field and I'm not gonna say always in combat, I had a nice apartment in Vong Tau. Uh, I don't have any complaints. But each individual, was it was a different kind of unit than just your standard helicopter unit or infantry unit. How big was your uh, photo team when you normally go out? I'd say probably three motion picture and two stills. Okay. What, do you, what do you guys remember? I think that's about right. Yeah, I bet there were a lot of challenges too with the film, the analog film. The primary camera was a Filmo, a 16 millimeter crank up, and with a full wind, you could only do three minutes, and then you'd have to stop and redo it. So you weren't shooting long shots of things. You had to pretty much get in there, um, uh, do your establisher and your medium shot and your close-ups, and then, um, and it was all, it was silent. And so unless you had a tape recorder or they assigned you a sound guy, um, you were uh, you're pretty much having to take notes and, uh, and be able to caption 
your film um, on the fly. You had certain settings on that camera too that you had, did you preset them? The Filmo had, has three lenses usually. That's yeah. the normal set. A, a wide, a medium, and a, and a, a telephoto. Um, and each one of them have f-stops just like a still camera. So you needed to be aware of that and know what you were doing. But, but uh, Vietnam was so intensely sunshine that uh, the, the primary problem, I think, was probably going from full sun into shadow. And you'd have mm. to adjust the f-stops uh, to be able to make that work. The film was sent uh, to stateside to be developed. And most mm. of the time, virtually all of the time, we never saw it again. We never saw what we did. So we couldn't critique ourselves. Uh, all we'd get was a, yeah, that was good, or usually just silence. You look back at the, the guys who shot film in, in World War II, without those films, bringing that experience that America had to life would not have existed, the film and the still pictures. So, you know, it's not exactly a holy mission, but I think it's, I'm glad that the, uh, that the uh, people in charge of the army had us doing what we were doing because there's some films that, that are now available that, that give a flavor of what these guys went through. And without us, they would not have. For sure. They would not have that. How did the troops react to, um, <laughs> react to your, your film? I don't know about the other two, but the, I, I, more than once, we would we would join a unit and sometimes they were already in the field it's not like we all left from base camp which sometimes also happened but we join them in the field and they look at us like what are you doing here you don't have to be here you're crazy uh or maybe not quite that strong but but it was sort of mystified that people would actually do this which was uh i found interesting and sometimes I found the units were very accepting of a photographer, but there were other units you could see they had some, oh, let's say internal issues and they felt uncomfortable. Like, why are we here? Are we filming because we have problem? The unit has a problem and you're spying on us. Uh, but other wow. times I felt extremely comfortable with some of the groups I went out with. Yeah, and I feel that, uh... I was doing some things that I shouldn't have been doing, like walking where I shouldn't be walking. And the one trooper said, you shouldn't be doing that. You, you're going to get hurt. So he kind of straightened me out and put me in line. You were in danger. What was that? What was, did you have any particular feeling about that, that this was a dangerous mission? Yeah, you wish, I wished I was home. <laughs> <laughs> but you do the mission, and I kind you know, and I mentioned it, I think, at one of our reunions. Whenever I felt a lot of stress on a mission, I would lift up the camera, look through the camera, and I felt I was watching it on TV. Mm -hmm. That was sort of a emotional protection for me, and it kept me sane. Uh, but I never really thought about it that much. Tell you the truth. If you're in a firefight, you forget, like, you're filming the action. You're not really thinking about this or that, but you, you do want to stay low uh, and just film the action. So that's what I did. If you're looking through the, a viewfinder, it's a, a completely different mindset than if you suddenly look you know, out, oh yeah, that's real. But, but looking through the viewfinder, it just seems um, that you're, you're not really there, which is of course insane, but th that's an impression. Do you feel um, there was a real brotherhood as, for, as combat photographers? I think that's a big difference between what we did and say an infantry unit. If you, if you've got guys who you're with every day and your life depends on them and them on you, theirs on you, then that's a whole different thing. And we were freelancers, basically. We were out uh -huh. there sometimes on our own. 
uh, and moving around so much that uh, it was, a, I think, a very different experience. Since we have you all here is um, the importance of reminding um, modern America about the Vietnam War. For a long time, our nation disapproved of it. But when I see the documentaries right now, people are interested in what kind of footage they're seeing. And I'm glad I was part of that. I did see some of my footage on there. So no credit. I'm glad I was a photographer and I take pride in that I was able to document the different aspects of the Vietnam War, not just the combat experiences. I was able to document, for instance, the leper colonies and the GIs helping out in the orphanages and, and uh, in the villages and uh, in the hospitals. I was happy to document that part too, to show it wasn't all combat. And I was also happy that I was able to document the strength of the Vietnamese people taking care of their families. We had a purpose and I, and I am proud that we, we did what we did and, and history can look on some of the things we did and understand the Vietnam experience better. I just think your chopper project is, is terrific. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I saw the documentary and I was really impressed with how it opens up the, the things that have been in internalized by these guys for all this time. It um, certainly has um, organically taken a life of its own. It uh, has grown into a project that um, has been very rewarding for me. And um, like you say, it's been, it's been opened up a lot of, a lot of emotions and doors that normally wouldn't have wouldn't have happened for a lot of these uh, veterans that have experienced it and been a real catalyst for their conversation and, and healing. I want to thank you guys for sharing all your personal stories with us and um, stay in touch, you guys. I thank you very much for participating with us. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Good seeing you guys. Keep in touch, guys. Keep in touch.